Oh, I know you'll want to sink your fangs into this one. Let's start with the s'mores trifles. What is it that we love about s'mores? The melted marshmallow. So I'm starting with a marshmallow sauce. I'm measuring half a cup of water into a small sauce pot, and I need to add some gelatin to it. I'm measuring a teaspoon of gelatin over top, and then I'll turn this on low heat just to dissolve the gelatin. It only takes a minute or two. My remaining half a cup of water, I'm going to pour into a separate pot. And I'll add to that half a cup of water, the sugar, a cup and a half. And I'm not done yet. Part of what makes marshmallows so sticky is the corn syrup. This recipe, you need a full cup of white corn syrup. I'll turn the sugar mixture on high heat and I'll let that boil without stirring until it reaches 240. Now, my gelatin has had a little time to dissolve and my sugar's just coming up to a boil. So now I will whisk in the gelatin and I'll take this over to my stand mixer. I'm going to pour my hot sugar over a metal spoon to absorb some of the heat. And now you simply whip this on high speed until it cools down and it turns all white and frothy. Marshmallow. I love how that clear liquid transforms to this gooey marshmallow sauce. I wanna add some flavor right now. So I'm going to pour in a tablespoon of vanilla bean paste. Quick stir. Now, sauce number two, a really good, rich chocolate sauce. So I have a saucepan here, and I'm going to measure into that one cup of milk. I also need one cup of dark brown sugar and half a cup of unsalted butter. Just over medium heat to melt the sugar in the butter, and once it's melted, then I add my chocolate. I need 12 ounces of semi-sweet. So now I can add my chocolate and I'll just whisk that in. As soon as the chocolate has melted in and the sauce is smooth, you're good to go. I'm just going to transfer it to a pitcher. That way it cools down a bit. I'll add a teaspoon of vanilla and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Almost time to assemble the s'mores trifles but I need that graham layer. I am using graham crackers to assemble my little trifles, but I also like to make a graham cracker crumb base. So I need three cups of graham cracker crumbs. And just like making a cheesecake crust, I stir the crumbs with a bit of butter. I've melted half a cup here, and I'll just give that a quick stir, just to coat the crumbs. All right, so now it's assembly time. I've got eight see-through ramekins. And my first layer, to give it a little base, I'll add a spoonful of the graham cracker crumbs. Just spread it, but you don't have to press it. Then I top the graham cracker crumb with the marshmallow. Wow, look at how that's set up. Mm, gooey goodness. Nice, even layer to coat the graham crumbs. Now to separate the marshmallow from the chocolate layer, I have graham cracker squares here, and I'll just set one on top of the marshmallow sauce. And give it a light press. That way you can squish the marshmallow to the sides. There we go. Now for the chocolate sauce. So I can pour it over the graham cracker. So now that layer of graham crumb marshmallow, graham cracker, chocolate, I repeat all over again. And it should pretty much reach the top of each dish. Back to the graham crackers. Now, chocolate sauce. And there we go. Now, the finishing touch. I top these off with a handful of mini marshmallows. Right on top. And these look amazing, but I need to bake them off just a little bit. I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees and you wanna give it about three to four minutes. And the whole function is only to melt the marshmallows and toast them on the top layer. Oh 
Well, these don't take long. Oh, I love how marshmallows brown. Just makes them look so appetizing. But they're not exactly spooky, are they? Well, a simple decor trick, buying candy eyeballs just spooks up just about anything. And all of a sudden, an individual dessert takes on a bit of a creepy character. Oh, gooey, 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 all the way through. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm.